Today, we look at one of boxing's most formidable competitors and pound-for-pound pound, great punchers. How good was the fighting sailor, Tom Sharkey? Thomas Sharkey was born November 26, 1873, in Dundalk, Ireland. Sharkey stood 5 feet 8, with a 70-inch reach. He had an aggregate weight of 178 pounds for his career. Sharkey's career spanned from 1893 to 1904. He had 40 wins, 6 losses, and 5 draws. He also had 2 no contests and 1 non-decision bout. 37 of his wins were by knockout. His win percentage was 74, and his knockout percentage was 69. Sharkey is most associated with the heavyweight division, though he primarily weighed in around the light heavyweight and cruiserweight limits. Tom Sharkey was lightning in a bottle. One of the smaller heavyweights, Sharkey made up for his size with pure ferociousness in the ring. Sharkey was a brawler in the true sense of the word and didn't mind taking damage to dish out his own. He also wasn't shy about bending the rules in his favor and had a number of hothead moments. Sharkey's early career test came in the form of Nick Burley, with whom he drew and fought to a no decision both in 1894. Burley would be a top contender, having faced several top-tier opponents in his career. On April 16, 1896, Sharkey would step in the ring with one of boxing's most formidable fighters of the late 1800s and early 1900s, the California terror Joe Koinsky. Things started out heated as Sharkey hit Choinksy with a low blow in the first round that sparked a period of chaos as police had to enter the ring to calm things down, which took about 20 minutes. Once the fight was restored, Koinsky would take an aggressive approach as most of the purse would go to Koinsky if he could knock out Sharkey. Koinsky started to land clean lefts and, at one point, sent Sharkey through the ropes with a hard shot. In an effort to avoid a knockout, Sharkey purposely fell to the floor numerous times. Koinsky had him all but out in the eighth and final round, but the bell saved Sharkey. Sharkey was given the decision, having avoided being knocked out. Sharkey would step into the ring with another legendary fighter in Gentleman James J. Corbett on June 24, 1896. The fight went down in Corbett's hometown, San Francisco, California. Slated for only four rounds, the two men fought fiercely from the jump. Sharkey got in most of his work on the inside and repeatedly clinched. Corbett had his moments through the first three rounds of the fight but was exhausted in the fourth and looked like a beaten man. Corbett was able to avoid being knocked out by continually clinching. The fight was ultimately ruled a draw after police had to step in and stop the contest after the fourth due to Sharkey's refusal to stop fighting. Sharkey had to be restrained from going after Corbett in the fight's aftermath. Sharkey believed that Corbett purposely signaled for police interference to avoid being knocked out. In a highly controversial fight on December 2, 1896, Sharkey would step in with the hard-punching fighting blacksmith, Bob Fitzsimmons, promoted for the World Heavyweight Championship though not officially confirmed. There was a $10,000 purse on the line for the winner. Famous gunslinger Wyatt Earp was the referee for the fight after the two men couldn't agree and left it up to the athletic club. Earp was arrested afterward for carrying a concealed weapon without a permit, a foot-long, cold 45-foot caliber pistol. He was relieved of the gun while entering the arena. Fitzsimmons dominated the fight and knocked out Sharkey in the eighth round. Sharkey had to be carried to the locker room. To the dismay of the crowd, the decision was then reversed by referee Wyatt Earp, who claimed that Fitzsimmons needs Sharkey in the groin. This decision was highly criticized. Fitzsimmons unsuccessfully filed a junction in court to be rewarded with the $10,000 purse as the belief was that Sharkey and Earp had conspired to fix the fight. There was mention of the money line shifting to Sharkey as the favorite immediately before the fight. Additionally, Sharkey had refused to allow any physicians outside his own to examine him after the fight. Sharkey would be back in the ring with another great fighter from the era in Hall of Famer Peter Marr on June 9, 1897, in New York. The fight started tactical with Marr controlling the first two rounds from a distance as his jab kept Sharkey from rushing in. 
Sharky started to swing wildly in an effort to land on Mar as the fight wore on though few shots got through cleanly. Sharky stepped up his aggression and caught Mar with a shot that sent him down and nearly threw the ropes in the sixth. Mar was able to recover. In the seventh, Mar stepped on the gas and let off a combination that dropped Sharky and had him groggy. When back on his feet, Sharky fought fire with fire, and the two men continued to brawl after the bell sounded, ending the round. This forced the police to jump into the ring to break up the action and prevent a melee. The referee called the fight a draw. On November 18, 1897, Sharky met Australia's Joe Goddard. The fight was scheduled to go 20 rounds, but Sharky landed a hard shot that seemingly hurt Goddard in the sixth. Sharky then rushed in for the kill, but the force of his impact sent both him and Goddard to the floor, bouncing Goddard's head on the canvas. The referee awarded the fight to Sharky after Goddard rose and staggered severely due to being dazed. In a foul-filled affair, Sharky's next fight would be a March 11, 1898, return bout with Joe Koinsky. Koinsky showed his superior skill from the opening bell as he repeatedly beamed Sharky with straight shots. Sharky spent the bulk of the fight swinging wildly as he tried to get past Koinsky's left jab. Sharky started to ramp up the illegal tactics in the fifth round when the ref and police had to intervene to prevent him from pushing Koinsky over the ropes. In the seventh, Sharky started to hit in the clinch before being caught with a head-snapping shot from Koinsky that had him groggy. By the eighth round, Sharky rushed Koinsky after taking several shots, forcing both through the ropes and on a ringside platform. The referee, a pugilist by the name of George Green, had seen enough and stopped the fight, declaring it a draw despite Sharky losing every round. Sharky was enraged at the decision and tried to attack the referee, which forced the police to interfere again to restrain him. James J. Jeffries would be Sharky's next opponent, and the two men faced off on May 6, 1898. Chaos delayed the fight after a section of seating collapsed. Sharky was floored in the 11th round and lost a 20-round decision to the larger Jeffries. After a first-round knockout of heavyweight contender Gus Rowland on June 29, 1898, Sharky would step back into the ring with Jim Corbett on November 22, 1898, in a contest scheduled for 20 rounds. Sharky was focused on bodywork early on as he routinely backed Corbett into ring corners to get off his shots. Sharky landed a right to the jaw in the second round that sent Corbett to the floor, though he could resume the action. Sharky continued to throw with force, even making Corbett wince with some shots. In the ninth round, Sharky landed a shot that Corbett's corner and the crowd viewed as a foul. This forced Corbett second to jump in the ring, yelling at the referee. It was decided that Corbett would be disqualified for the move as the crowd got unruly. Sharky would take on Hall of Fame middleweight, Charles Kidd McCoy in his next fight on January 10, 1899. McCoy started with the upper hand as the quicker fighter and continually countered Sharky as he rushed inside. In the third, McCoy countered Sharky with hard rights that sent him down twice in succession. Sharky dropped McCoy in the eighth with a body shot that seemed low. It would be a forceful left hook from Sharky in the tenth round that knocked out McCoy, giving Sharky the emphatic victory. Sharky would get the opportunity of his career, on November 3, 1899, when he again met James J. Jeffries, this time with the world heavyweight title at stake. In the only known videotape of Sharky in his fighting prime, Sharky can be seen battling fiercely with Jeffries in a packed arena. The footage was captured via a camera hidden in a cigar box. Jeffries outweighed Sharky by nearly 30 pounds and used his weight and size effectively in the fight. Jeffries was known for his iron chin and endurance, which allowed him to withstand Sharky's offensive assault. In the end, Jeffries would retain his title with a 25-round points victory. After a fourth-round KO victory in a rematch with Joe Goddard in February of 1900, Tom would face off with Joe Koinsky a few months later on May 3rd. This fight would be a sharp contrast to their earlier meeting as Sharky quickly got out of the gates and never let up. He dropped Koinsky twice in the first round. 
Koinsky fired back with punches of his own, but it was Sharkey who was doing the significant damage, and as the bell sounded to end the second round, Sharkey landed a damning blow that sent Koinsky to the canvas. Koinsky made it back to his corner, but fell flat when trying to answer the bell for the third round. Sharkey was awarded the TKO victory. After rising from the canvas to stop Gus Rulon in their June 1900 contest, Sharkey would step back in the ring with Bob Fitzsimmons on August 24. Hellbent on avenging his unjust defeat in their previous meeting, Fitzsimmons came into the fight with one intention, knockout. Sharkey came out swinging with wild blows in the first as he was getting sidestepped and countered by Fitzsimmons. Fitzsimmons continued to use feints to set up his right hand. Sharkey was able to land a looping shot that sent Fitzsimmons down, along with Sharkey, just before the bell sounded. In the second round, Sharkey charged out in an effort to finish Fitzsimmons but overplayed his hand as Fitzsimmons mixed in a combination of body-to-head blows to send Sharkey down and groggy when getting back to his feet. Sharkey rose to his feet before Fitzsimmons again pounced as a right hand closed Sharkey's night, sending him down and out for good in the second round. Sharkey would close his career going 1-3, and three, with one no contest in his final four fights. This included a May 7, 1901, disqualification loss to contender Mexican Pete Everett, a January 1902 no contest with Peter Marr after the fight was stopped due to a lack of action, an 11th round knockout loss to Gus Rulon in their June 26, 1902, contest, and a 6 round points loss to Jack Monroe in their February 27, 1904 contest, which was Sharkey's final career fight. Sharkey would finish his career on a long list of top fighters, from the era, who never won a world championship. Sharkey faced six Hall of Famers. His most notable fights were against Hall of Famer Joe Koinsky Gus Rulon Hall of Famer Peter Marr Hall of Famer Bob Fitzsimmons Hall of Famer James J. Corbett Hall of Famer Charles Kid McCoy Hall of Famer James J. Jeffries Tom Sharkey died on April 17, 1953, at 79. Sharkey's tough and rugged style made him a fan favorite and mainstay of the heavyweight division in the late 1800s to early 1900s. While his career was short in length, Sharkey made the most of it and fought a number of the top champions and contenders from his time. Sharkey was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 2003.